Pomôžte mi privítať nášho ďalšieho rečníka Noela Toka. Hi. Hi. Um, please let me know after, please find me. Um, you know, I'm happy to, to tell you more about whatever you might have missed. Um, I know I speak pretty quickly, so just find me. Um, I'll be at the after party. Uh, anybody going to the after party? No? Come on, who's going to the after party? Oh, a bit more than that, hopefully. So, uh, just to introduce uh, who I am. Uh, so, he's already, um, Silvio's already said quite a couple things. Um, I'm, I heard human made, heard products, everything, so I guess you have a, a small background about me. Um, I'm originally from Switzerland, uh, Zurich, so I'm not too far away from here. Um, I run human made with my two partners, Tom and Joe. We have 24 employees now or so. Uh, which is pretty fun. Um, we are completely remote, so that's the beauty of today's technology, right? You can work from anywhere in the world. Uh, we have people in Norway, Australia, the UK. I'm, in, I'm everywhere in the world because I don't really live anywhere, so that's my joy. Um, we're also a WordPress.com VIP partner. We're the only ones in Europe, uh, which is pretty cool. So we get to work on pretty large clients, Airbnb, Skype, PayPal, Samsung, all these sort of larger things, which, is, uh, which really pushes WordPress to its limit, right? So we really do a lot of WordPress stuff, even if we consider ourselves a technology company. Uh, one of our more prominent projects recently was uh, Belong Anywhere from Airbnb, where you know, there, there was the celebration, the anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, it was great to be able to create a multilingual website, even if it was a small project for Airbnb, and even if 90 people worked on this one page for a couple of weeks. Um, it was really cool. So apart from the agency stuff that we do, uh, we also have quite a bit of products and things that we build ourselves. Um, I run the product unit. Uh, so in this case, we have Happy Tables, for one. Uh, Happy Tables is a platform whereby restaurants can create and manage their own websites. Uh, I'll show you a short demo uh, in a bit. Uh, and then we also have WP Remote, uh, which maybe some of you already used to manage multiple um, WordPress websites at the same time. So WP Remote was born out of our own usage for it. So a couple years ago, we had about 400 sites that we needed to manage and update at the same time. So we created our own tool for it and then just opened it up for everyone else. So I don't want to get too complicated with, with WordPress products. Um, I will give you a, a very quick demo of Happy Tables to show you what is possible, um, but I also don't want to intimidate you into um, saying this is what a WordPress product has to look like if you create your first product. Uh, let's see if I can get out of this. Yes, cool. Uh, not cool. Am I in there now? Yep. That's not going to work, huh? Let's see. Displays. Just bear with me for a second. Nope. Where's that? Ah, here we go. That should be on maximum. Ah, the default for display. No, that does not. Basically, it, it hates me at this point because I haven't figured this out. Um, so we, we have Happy Tables, which is not working on this particular. I'll, sh I'll try to I'll try to figure it out later because it's really not working. Uh, yeah, it's really not working here. Unless you know what I know what to do. Uh, I know what to do. Yes, I'll do it, and then. Scaled. Yes? I'm okay now, I think. No, I got it now. It's good now. Huh? Oh, no, we're okay now. It was a resolution that was messing up, so it was, it was breaking everything. Uh, we're okay now, don't worry. So, uh, this is the... This is, this is the Happy Tables platform as it is now, and it's built on WordPress. This is completely WordPress. Um, so how restaurants now create websites on our platform is that they're able to basically hover over any block, uh, click on Edit, uh, go into any field, and start typing. You know, say anything they want, um, get out of it, or you know, 
do whatever you want. Um, align it differently if you want to. Change the position. Confirm that. Um, we can also you know, change fonts on the fly. Things like this. And this is really important for, for our sort of audience or our kind of clients, right? Because our clients are restaurants. They don't want to be in the WordPress admin trying to create new pages and new posts and things like that. So they need a different user experience, right? And this is why we created this product, but we've built it using WordPress. Um, and it, it is, there is a degree of complexity to it, right? Because we've used WordPress. We use the REST API to connect uh, through to the front end, where we have a JavaScript framework, uh, which is knockout.js. And this is, this is quite complicated. It's not something that you just build uh, overnight, right? So what I'd really like to do is sort of give you examples of how you know, we've gotten this far uh, in terms of just the mindset, uh, how we build products, how we, where do we start, right? So let me pop back out of here. Um, I'll fix this a lot quicker this time. Put this back down to the end of 600. And then not mirror displays, at which point, why is this over here? And we can close this. Yes, we can close that and play slideshow. Cool, so we're back. Um, so using WordPress to create web, uh, products, uh, I, I guess the title is, is, is somewhat um, it's, it's the wrong way around um, because you don't really, if you create a product, you use whatever tools you find to put it together. You don't necessarily have to take WordPress and then create something for WordPress. You can use WordPress to create something for a much larger audience, like we did for Happy Tables, um, or you can create uh, an entirely new tech, or you can use a different technology stack to for the WordPress audience, you know, such as Manage WP, uh, which has a you know web application. So you can go any sort of way, but WordPress isn't you know the holy grail or the only uh, technology you have to use when building things. Um, the you know the example we just saw before with the the open source bike system. That's, uh, that was like Twitter Bootstrap, that was like Leaflet.js, all these you know, great technologies um, which don't necessarily have to be built on WordPress. Yes, they use WordPress, but only for the website. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is really get into what is a product, um, how do you start building a product, you know, how do you distribute it, and, and how do you iterate over it to, to create something that you sort of own and that you have um, you know, something that you can develop and, and take really that step further if you want. Um, so I really like this description of what a product is. Uh, it's, it's from Wikipedia. It says, a product is anything that can be offered to a market that might satisfy a want or need. So I think this is really important. Um, the, the, the most powerful word in this sentence is might, right? So what might is doing is, is it's implying uh, success or failure. It's saying you might be successful with your product, or you might not. Um, and you know, 90% of startups probably fail. So you know, it's 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 a very true uh, statement. I think for the context of my talk, um, I, I would go a step further because everything you create for a client is essentially a product, right? So when a client comes to you and says, "I need a new website for X project." Uh, or for my business, that's a product that you put online, right? You create that website, let's say it's an e-commerce shop, and you put it online, that's only the beginning of the product's uh, journey. It's the beginning of the product's lifetime, right? It's not just that it's online and your work is done. It's online now, and the work really begins because you test, you measure, you see what the conversion rates are, and you build on top of that product to develop something that really converts well for the client. So. In the context of what I'm talking about for products, I'd really say instead of building one-off products um, that has many features or, or, or many um, things to it for one client, you try to build a product that does one or two things for many, many clients, right? And your hope is that you're able to distribute this to, to many people um, around the world and that they'll all use it. You know? 
uh, you either build a hosting company and you get a lot of users, you, uh, you build a theme for WordPress, you hope to sell it, uh, you hope that a lot of people will ultimately buy it, and it's great for you because you can just you know, create this one product and distribute it to many. Um, so, why build a product? I think that's um, a very important question. Um, you know, especially in today's day and age, we see a lot of people starting startups uh, simply because it's, it's almost a trend, you know? And then you also have a lot of people that start startups or say, I want to be my own boss because they don't like their existing boss, right? It, it, that's the, and that's the false premise. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of sides to it. Um, the first one is probably passion. So for me, when I started building Happy Tables, it was to help independent restaurants become more successful online, right? Um, so that's, that's my passion for that product. Um, I think there's also the angle that sometimes you just find that you're, you, you, you have this idea, which is um, just a solution to connecting two positions together so that they can work a lot better. Uber is, is a great example of that, right? You, you have an application, you call a car, it comes, it picks you up, drops you off, everything happens by credit card. So they, 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 they figured something out, right? Um, the biggest one for a lot of people is scalable, right? It's the idea of being able to invest X amount of time into a project or a product that then scales in terms of revenue. So no matter how many clients you have, if you have, um, you know, 10,000 clients or 10,010 clients, your amount of work doesn't actually change, right? So that's the beauty or what everybody seeks in trying to be scalable. Um, another one for products which is very popular is passive. It's passive, uh, passive revenue, so that when you're asleep, when you're on vacation or whatever, uh, your website is still running and still generating revenue. And then ultimately, it's a way out, right? So. Uh, a lot of people create products or startups because they want to be able to be their own boss, you know, not have to answer to uh, whoever. And the great thing about working online like we do today is that we're all empowered to create our own products regardless of where we are in the world. You know, there's, there's no boundaries. Everybody has access to code. Everybody can build. Um, so that's, that's what, you know, makes this, this whole um, industry that we're in now so... I mean, I guess it's flooded by so many products and so many ideas. Um, it's for anything that we seek in terms of tools or uh, s you know, solutions we're looking at, there's always 10 or 20 or 30 options that we can pick from. So with all this in mind, where do we begin? Um, so at this point, this is where I like to share some of the advice that I had uh, or I went through when I started creating products. Um, I think the biggest thing you should get used to or, or attempt to do is to, to start small. Um, really get in the habit of actually getting something out of the door as opposed to having ideas that are too big that you never execute them, right? Um, so three years ago or so, I woke up, it was four o'clock in the morning or so, uh, and I did what everybody else would do at that time. I started thinking about CSS, um, the new CSS filters that had just come out because uh, they were really cool. And I had, this, I had this idea, because you know, I, I do a lot of photography too, and I, and I thought I could use the CSS filters to replicate uh, tilt shift, right? It's that, it's that concept of photography whereby uh, when you edit an image, it, it seems as if the, the people or the objects in them, which are very large, are actually very small. So I created this here. Uh, so you can kind of see the effect, right? It's, it's, it's blurred down here, it's blurred up there, and then it's in focus here. Um, so all that is uh, achieved through, th uh, through CSS, right? And it took me, it, oops, it took me two hours to, call, uh, to, to code the plugin. Um, I'm not really a developer, I just try to learn stuff. Uh, it took me two hours to, 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 to actually make it work. Uh, it, it took me another two, three hours to actually package it nicely, you know, on a nice website and everything. Um, I actually, interestingly enough, I, I created it as an HTML page on my site as opposed to a WordPress page because I wanted to go faster in case there was a lot of traffic. Um, and then at 12 o'clock, so at lunchtime that day, um, I put it out um, on Hacker News. 
it came to third or fourth uh, in, in the rankings, which is pretty good. Um, and at one point, I had 960 people on my website at the same time, um, which is quite a lot. And obviously, this is not a product that you sell for money. It's not. It's not about. Um, you know, it's not about trying to create revenue, um, but it is still a product. It's it's something that does a function. Um, it's packaged together nicely enough, um, and people can use it. You know, so some people ultimately used it, or they, they took parts of it and used it for their own projects. Um, and that's incredible, you know, uh, because it also it also gives you an appreciation for the process. Um, it helps you get out there, you know, and try things out without having to, you know, make this big investment into an, an idea if you've never really created things before. Um, so, you know, even a couple years later, um, I'm still getting traffic on the site, even though you won't see it here. Um, it's still on GitHub. Uh, for some reason, you know, it has what now 517 stars. You know, I've I've I, I committed it three years ago. Haven't touched it since. Uh, but I've been able to put it out there and just let it, you know, be there. And maybe other people can use it, maybe not. But it's, it's a small little product, ultimately, because I have full ownership over it. It's not something that I'm, uh, my boss made me do at the time. Um, so it, it worked out quite well in that regard. Um, so even now, it's still getting tweets. You know, like this is, this, I mean, it's, it's like a month old screenshot, but it's still daily tweets about the plugin. And I think in the end, that was what, like, it was probably like six hours of work um, altogether, just because the idea sort of uh, came to me. So it's so important if you have small ideas that you can execute on to be able to just put those out there, you know, and, and really find that, that sort of inner confidence to say, fuck it, let me build this thing, let me put it out there. Um, another example of a weekend project um, was... Uh, better restaurant websites. Um, so at the time, at the time, I was building happy tables. Um, I I was I was staring at the kitchen wall and I was like, oh, what could I do? What could I do? And then all of a sudden, it hit me. I could create a website whereby, um, you know, I list a lot of the things that restaurant websites do incorrectly. Um, so I, I I had this concept, this exact sort of concept in my head. Uh, so I designed and developed the WordPress theme for it uh, in one day. And then I, f I created all the content for it on the next day. So it was a Saturday and Sunday sort of project. I mean, yeah, I didn't do anything else that weekend, obviously. But I, you know, I really had that idea. I really wanted to build it. Um, and this was something else that was really successful, uh, just as a weekend project. Um, just to give you a little more content on it, um, you know, like a lot of restaurant websites have music. Uh, so you know, I had an article like this. Uh, there was a poll at the bottom, a uh, little survey, do you want music on a website or not? And obviously, everybody says no, so uh, it, it's in favor of this article. Um, you can see, I mean, the, the, the social statistics on it are great, right? So it's one of, those, one of those websites that still today is getting a lot of inbound traffic from, um, from Google, right? So organic traffic is just pouring in, and I just have a link. Uh, to happy tables at the bottom of this website. You know, nothing too forceful, nothing too salesy. It's just, this was built by happy tables. And that gets clicked, you know, on a daily basis, and it pushes traffic to us. Uh, and again, this is something I haven't touched in, in forever. But again, it, it's one of those sort of, you have an idea, um, and it's, it, it's low effort, it's small. Um, it, it's easy to put together, so it's, it's one of those things you should really just go for. You know, if you have a smaller idea that you can execute on, just do it. Um, so why start small? Um, I mean, I pretty much told you all the reasons. Low investment, right? Um, you, you're not putting in much time. Uh, I think with both these other projects, I was working on, I was still working in private banking. And that, you know, obviously I was doing like 10, 12 hour days or whatever, and I only had time on the weekends or at night to, to work on things like this. Um, small risk. Uh, so a lot of people are very uncomfortable putting something large out there because they're putting themselves on, on the line. You know, they're exposing um, their sort of weaknesses or vulnerabilities. So it's, it's very, um, it, it's important to start small if, if, you know, if, you have, if you've never done this kind of thing before. And ultimately, creating small things and putting them out there is quite empowering, right? Because once you do it once, you're much more comfortable doing it a second time or a third time or a fourth time. Um, this is why now I have absolutely no problem 
creating something and just throwing it out there to see what happens. You know, does it work, does it not work? If it doesn't work, fine. No issues at all, I can move on to the next thing. So, the beauty about what we would do in WordPress, or being able to create uh, products within WordPress, is that we have full access to distribution, right? So, I mean, if you create a product, um, it only really truly is a product if people use it, right? So it's like mixing two chemicals together and seeing what happens. You have your product, and then there's a whole user base out there to see, you know, is this something that I want to use? Uh, they use it or they don't use it. Um, you won't know till you actually put your product out there. With WordPress, we have uh, WordPress.org, right? So uh, there's a lot of popular plugins that are there for free. Uh, WordPress SEO. Who uses WordPress SEO? I do. Yeah, most of you do too, probably. Um, the cool thing is that this plugin is free, but then Yoast upsells a bunch of other things. Let's see if this laser works. Yeah, so he sells his own plugins. He sells uh, WordPress reviews. I mean, you're sorry, site reviews for like 400, 500 euros. And then he also has, um, you know, a couple ebooks and plugins, whatever. Uh, which he sells as back-end products, and those work out great. That's his entire company. That's how he's able to hire, uh, you know, 10 or 12 people or whatever it is, based off the one plugin that pushes all the traffic to the rest of the stuff. Um, same with WooCommerce, right? WooCommerce is now has over a million active downloads. Uh, sorry, active um, sites um, online, which is absolutely incredible. Now, what's interesting is. WooCommerce, um, obviously the platform here is free, but then the plugins cost something. But what's very interesting is that they're not really the ones to develop or maintain these plugins. So if you go on their website um, and you go a bit further, you can download um, all these other plugins, right? And these are not developed in most cases by the WooCommerce team. They're developed by third parties. They just take a cut. So they've become a marketplace for um, for premium products, which cost quite a fair amount, right? So if I buy, if I buy the, the top three products, I'm at $450, right, in terms of how much that costs. That's, that's, a, that's quite a bit in, you know, compared to your $27 theme or whatever it is, right? So th they've created this, this, this great marketplace because they almost don't sell any pre uh, premium products that they've built themselves. It's all about distribution. But at the same time, if you do create something free and you maintain it on WordPress.org, it's really important that your reputation and the quality of the product lives up to its standards. So I have a plugin on WordPress.org, uh, Hammy. Um, so like I told you before, I create things, I put them on there, and I forget about them. Really bad in the case of WordPress.org, right? Because these are my reviews. So I have five one-star reviews. You know, and that's probably because I'm not responding to people because I don't even see the notifications come in. You know, one great example of that is uh, just simply doesn't work. Okay, um, that's too bad. Um, so, you know, in my defense, you know, I, you know, year, you know, a couple months later, I, I go in, I say, hey, what's wrong? You know, how can I help? Um, and the guy's gone, right? I mean, he's not going to come back or whatever. And the product works. The problem is that the doc, it's a bit more complicated than just plug and play. Um, so, but a lot of people on WordPress.org are simple users. They're not advanced users at all. So it's important that your product, if you do create anything and do put it on WordPress.org, that you maintain it, that you maintain the relationships with people and that you have a, a really good uh, set of documentations to, to really help them uh, actually use your product and be someone who... Uh, essentially becomes an ambassador for your product, right? They refer um, other, you know, they refer other people to your plugin, to your product. Um, so we have another plugin on uh, WordPress.org, which is Backup WordPress. Uh, so we have well over a million downloads on that plugin, and that's something that we maintain actively, right? Because we also have um, a premium plugin for it. So by maintaining the the, the free plugin uh, quite well. And we don't really do much work on the premium plugins because they're, you know, they, they work by themselves. Uh, we have about, I don't know, about 5,000, 7,000 US dollars per month 
in revenue that's just sort of passive, um, and we just maintain it. It doesn't really cost too much for us to maintain, maybe a couple hours a month plus the support. Um, so WordPress.org is definitely you know a very valuable um, channel to go through. Um, so you know how do we acquire users? Um, inbound. Uh, that's, so that's that's what I was talking about before with uh, you know having something like uh, you know better restaurant websites whereby you know I have all the content on my website and we get organic sort of search traffic to us. It's the same way with WordPress.org. If you have a good plugin on there, you can create inbound traffic to your um, to your you know your premium product, your upsell, or whatever you derive money from. Um, outbound is when you do a lot of advertising, and you know this this is really. I think outbound is one of those things where you can lose a lot of time. Uh, so Google advertising, AdWords, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, uh, you know, PPC, CPM, whatever it is, you can lose a lot of time, you can lose a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so if you're not too comfortable with things like that, don't touch it, focus on the product, focus on inbound for right now, uh, and go down that way. Um, packaging. You know, in, in today's day and age, just having a product by itself isn't enough. It's you need to have the documentation that works really well for it. You need to show it off beautifully. You need to have videos for people that work well with visuals. You need to have uh, well-written documentation for those that like to read more. Um, it, it, it's almost as if the, the, the way you package your product is its own product, right? So as much time you, you, as you spend on a product, you have to spend outside of the product making that product look good. Um, and ultimately, if, if you're not getting users to use your product, change it, right? Um, make it work or, or, or change it to the point that you are getting users. And if you're still not getting users, maybe that product just, just does not make sense, right? Uh, and that's when you have to learn to let go. Um, but how do we change a product? Uh, one of the things which is ultimately very important is to be able to you know, continuously test and make sure that you're, you're getting the most out of what your product is supposed to do. Um, so what we do with a lot of things is we, we track through analytics, AdWords, all these, uh, no, not AdWords, um, analytics, Mixpanel, um, Hotjar. So there's a lot of different tools we use. Um, if you're creating a, your, you know, your first blog or your first website or things like that, uh, one of the first things you can really do is you know, see which pages, which individual pages are working. Right? Because you can sort of treat a blog post as being its own product, as its own piece of content, if you want. Right? How well does it perform for certain markets? You know, how well does it do um, with people that come in through Google? Or how, many, how well does it do for people that come in through Facebook? Right? So bounce rate would be a great indicator of that. Uh, time on page is another great indicator. Um, and it, it, it is important to break down um, these statistics into more granular or smaller pieces instead of trying to look at the big picture, right? If you're saying my bounce rate for my website is, uh, you know, 60% and last month it was 40%, don't automatically assume your products become worse, right? Um, it could be that all of a sudden the spam bot hit your website and as just because the spam bots have 100% bounce rate, you're changing your entire graph, right? So it, it is important to be very granular. Um, obviously, don't kill yourself on, uh, on analytics. You know, I mean, check it out, but don't spend ages and ages on that. Uh, ultimately, user feedback will be the best thing you'll ever get. Um, to, to sort of go a step further, like what we do on Happy Tables is definitely, uh, I guess, a lot more advanced. Uh, we record almost every user session. Um, and then we also break those down to see which user experience issues our users running into. You know, are they, for a particular page, does a button uh, or does, does a piece of graphic look like a button when it's not a button, right? Uh, so sometimes we'll see uh, people clicking on a lot of things uh, which, you know, it's just not a button, it's not a link, but they're still clicking on it because they think it is one. So we, we, we in turn change it to, to be a button, right? So it's quite interesting. Um, at the same time, you can use things like Mixpanel to really you know, understand an entire user's history. Um, so in this case, we're able to see all the pages within the product that a user has gone to, um, what sort of profile they have, 
uh, and we're able to segregate users like that too to understand what their behavior is like. But these things are all quite advanced. Um, I really wouldn't jump into you know, analytics too much if you're really creating your first products. How am I doing for time? Two minutes? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, cut to the, I'll cut to the chase. Um, so before I wrap this up, I just want to say a few more things. Um, if, if, you have, if you have a project or an idea in mind, it's, it's so important to, to treat it as a product uh, because at that point, it, it gives it substance. It makes it real. Uh, I, I think it means, especially for yourself, um, that you're, setting, you're starting to set goals. And by setting goals, you're essentially opening yourself up to the option of having success or, or failure, right? Um, so even if you have a very small idea or a medium-sized idea, try to execute on it. You know, try, try to turn it around and turn it into a product that you can actually start working on and then hopefully with the goal of pushing it out to real people to use within you know, two, three weeks from today. Um, but the, the, the whole reason of you know, being open to success or failure is why so many people do not create products in the end, right? Because they don't want to, uh, they don't want to fail. They don't want to uh, make themselves vulnerable or, or show a sort of weakness. So they never build a product in the end, um, and that's that's too bad, you know. So a lot of people enjoy working for clients because if the the website for the client doesn't work, uh, then it's not your fault, right? The idea of the website was the client's, so it's their fault. You don't lose. Um, but if the product is your idea and it doesn't work, then you lose, right? But I think at the end of the day, especially from what I've learned, is that it doesn't really matter if your product um, succeeds or fails. Um, what's really important these days is, is the process. You know, what did you learn from creating this product? What did you... Uh, you know, what was the, you know, what are you going to do differently next time? Has it given you ideas for other products? Um, have you met new people because of it? Have you made new connections? Um, are you, I mean, you're definitely segregating yourself or making yourself more attractive in the general market if you want, um, if people are hiring, because you've gone through the process of trying to build things yourself. So in the end, you know, have fun. Uh, experiment a lot. Uh, if you don't try, you'll never know. And uh, build cool shit. Thank you. Now it's time for a Q&A session. Cool. So if you have any questions, now is the time. Thank you, Michal. Hi, thank you. I want to ask that mixed panel user detail page that you showed, that was for a logged in user? Yes. Uh, so mixed panel uh, can track both uh, it, it tracks two things. Mixpanel attracts events uh, yes. by anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with those events, you can attach super properties. And those super properties could be an alias. And that alias could be your user ID. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, either it's being tied to a guest as a whole. Yes. Um, so let's say for our WordPress, uh, sorry, our client websites that run off uh, happy tables, like all the restaurant websites that run, a lot of people visit those, which are definitely not users right, of our platform. Um, and we want to be able to um, track the, the click-through rate on different call to actions like reserve. Now it's time for a Q&A session. Cool. So if you have any questions, now is the time. Thank you, Michal. Hi, thank you. I want to ask that mixed panel user detail page that you showed that was for a logged in user. Yes. Uh, so mixed panel uh, can track both. Uh, it, it tracks two things. Mixed panel attracts events. Uh, by anybody, uh, and then with those events, you can attach super properties. And those super properties could be an alias, and that alias could be your user ID, mm -hmm. right? So uh, either it's being tied to a guest as a whole. Yes. Um, so let's say for our WordPress, uh, sorry, our client websites that run off uh, happy tables, like all the restaurant websites that run, a lot of people visit those, which are definitely not users, right, of our platform. Um, and we want to be able to um, track the, the click-through rate on different call to actions like reserve a table, order online, things like that. So these are not tied to a user. But then other actions within our dashboard, you know, like how many times someone changes a font, how many times they change a color, uh, how many food menu items they have, those are all tied to our user. So you can have that choice of, you know, are you trying to, 
to create a conversion funnel and to understand click-through for you know, just a lot of actions for logged out users, guests, um, random people? Or do you want to track your actual user base? Or just do both, the, both of those things? We do both of those things. And that mouse movement? That mouse movement was Hotjar. Uh, that's a pretty new tool uh, and actually records the entire screen. Mm -hmm. Well, the entire browser, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No worries, pleasure. Hotjar.com. Uh, I can have a question yes. as well. Uh, my question is now, where do you see WordPress products going in the coming years, for example, in the future? Yeah, so um, what's, what's very interesting with, with WordPress now is that the WordPress REST API um, the, is, it, it's the tool which allows other tools to communicate with WordPress, um, is, is making its way into WordPress core. Um, so it, it's becoming a real thing within WordPress, which means that people, or said differently, it means that WordPress is getting pushed deeper in the technology stack than it was before, right? So we, all, we have always known as WordPress as a CMS, and now it's becoming more of an engine if people want to use it as an engine, right? So it's just like a car, you don't see the engine anymore. You know, you just have the, the nice little outside sort of front end layer that then exists. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, an example is like Happy Tables, right? Where the user does not see WordPress at all anymore. Um, so a lot of people are trying to create web applications on top of WordPress because you already have the user uh, constructs, you have the security in place, you have custom post types, you have everything you kind of need to, you know, create something on uh, a web application of sort of small to medium complexity, right? Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that's going to happen this year um, is, is certainly the REST API and how that's going to be used for large projects. Uh, and then the other is probably front-end editing. Um, so what I, what I showed with Happy Tables, people editing their websites on the front-end, uh, but there's still a lot of complexity between theme compatibility and then the tools you use for it. So, yeah. Nech sa páči, ďalšie otázky, kto má? Môžete sa teraz spýtať, áno. Hey. Uh, uh, Noel, how do, <coughs> how do you uh, focus on creating product not to procrastinate and get distracted by everything else? Yes, good question, good question. Uh, we always procrastinate, right? So, I, I, it's, it's a good question. Um, I, I, I think for myself, and I'm speaking for myself, um, I go through phases of ups and downs. Um, so I think like sometimes I overexert myself and I push super hard because I have an idea in my mind, I really want to get it done. And then, and then it feels as if you almost burn out from that idea. Um, and then you procrastinate, you know, you do other shit, you do, you know, outside, outdoors shit and you actually have fun, right? Um, but you, you almost feel bad because you're, you, you don't have that same sort of energy as when you had that high, right? So you, 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 you see it as a weakness. Um, I think it's important to accept highs and lows uh, so that you, when, you, when you're really in, in a product or building mode that you, you go for it. But then when you hit a low to, to accept that as it is, um, to actually beat procrastination, um, I think there's, there's, there's two books which are really good. Um, the one is The War of Art, um, Stephen Pressfield. Um, he talks about the resistance, so that's the, the, the lizard brain, the amygdala, which sort of resists and says, y you should procrastinate, don't do this, you know? It's that difference between laying there in bed and saying, oh, I'm going to be this great developer and actually not being that person tomorrow, right? So um, the, the, the war of art, that's, that's an incredible book, so I guess that's the quickest way to, <laughs> to stop procrastinating is reading everything that Stephen writes. Um, yeah, good question. Did that answer it? Oh, sorry, the uh, second book would probably be um, Lynchpin by Seth Godin. Um, also, also talks about the lizard brain, the amygdala, um, just this sort of internal resistance, right, that, that stops us from really <laughs> delivering on what we want to create. So that's a really good book. No worries, pleasure. Other questions? We still have time for one last question, a short one, preferably. Come on. Okay. There we go. That was easy. Hi, Noel. Hey. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. I would like to ask you, uh, I have a plugin in mind, you know, I want to create, but I'm not a de developer. 
Yep. Uh, what do you think is the best way to find someone? Like, should I find a company or should I go to Elance and find a freelancer? Or what, what is the best uh, strategy you think? Yeah, yeah, this is a really good question. And I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry, Silvio, this is not a short answer, uh, but it's, a, it's an important one. Um, and, and I think a lot of people in this room uh, probably go through the same process. You know, they're like, I have an idea, but I'm not a developer, right? What happens then? Um, I, I think trying to go to Elance or trying to hire a company um, is not exactly the same as, as trying to find good people to work with, right? People you trust, people you have a, a connection with. Um, w when I first met Tom and Joe, that's what we had, right? And now we have, you know, a 27 person company um, all in. Um, and you really need to find the right partners that, that buy into your vision. Um, if you want to be the 100% owner of of the plugin, then yes, go through Elance, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it might be that you'll be the 100% owner of nothing in the end. Um, if you want to be the owner of a good business, uh, then you know maybe you'll you'll be the 30% owner or the 50% or the 70% owner of a good business, right? So try to find a partner. Um, this is a great place. Um, has everybody seen you? You know, if, if you're looking for a developer, right? Okay, well, he's looking for a developer. If you're looking to, to work on plugins, he's right here. Um, are you going to come to the after party? Yes, then you'll, you know, even better. You know, come to meetups, come to work camps, try to meet other people. Uh, and maybe someone buys into your idea uh, of, of what a plugin is the same way you do. Um, or let's say with the same sort of passion, but a, a different perspective, which is even more helpful because then you guys battle a bit and then come up with even better ideas, right? Um, so, yeah, good luck. You know, try to find someone. This was the last question because we have to move on. So thank you for your questions, all of you, and thank you, Noel, for your excellent workshop and excellent no presentation. This was thank Noel you. Talk thank you. from Human Make.